What's up guys, it's Patrick from Purple Park Studios and today in this video I am going to show you how I made this little sci-fi scene as well as a couple techniques for combining your green screen footage with CGI and Blender so let's get into it. So as you can see this scene is pretty simple, just a couple cylinders and circles um, that I did some basic modeling on and then put a texture on. If we go down under here and if I hit play you'll see You'll see here that I have this little circular disc and I have it animated moving downwards. And what I did to get this uh, green screen footage to stick to this disc was first you'll select your footage and then you'll holding down shift left click to select the object you want to parent it to and just hit control P and then select object and that will parent it to the object. So now wherever the object moves uh, your, your footage will stick to that object. So for example, I could move this anywhere and my footage will be stuck to that object. So it works really great if you're doing anything with like elevators or moving parts. Now keep in mind, if you want your character to actually step off of this and onto a platform or something, you might want to use a constraint and I have a video for that and I'll link that in the description. So there's one cool thing about uh, this shot that I think really helps kind of sell the effect and creates a big atmosphere and that's actually an HDRI that I'm using. So if I want to hop over to my shading tab over here, I'll go up to my shading editor so I'm here in the shading editor and I'm going to change this from object over to world which will allow me to work with the HDRI and as you can see I have a texture coordinate and a, and a mapping node plugged into the actual HDRI texture here and this allows me to do things like change the HDRI around. I can change the, the Z location of it here. I can also change rotation and you can do this for X, Y, and Z and playing with this is a really great way to help you get um, better lighting for your scene. For example, just changing this rotation here on the Z, you can already see that since I'm using an HDRI, it's definitely changing the lighting of the scene. Um, and then there's also on the Z location, we can play with that. So if I wanted to do something like maybe where the Earth was more in the background, you could do something like that. And right there, I have a whole different dynamic already to the shot. I'm going to control Z those. Um, but what I did actually was I animated this value. So if I go ahead and hit spacebar to play here, you'll see this value is changing. So you can see that that value went up and what that is doing is that's just slightly moving this uh, the HDRI on the Z going up so it just adds a slight feel that there's some movement to the background which just helps with the whole shift from the camera just adds a little bit more perspective to the shot. Now I do real quick want to actually talk about the camera so, um, so you can see it down here. I'm just going to switch over to solid view uh, for this and if you want to see the textures in solid view I know I've mentioned this in previous videos you can hit this little drop down arrow and it will usually be on material that's like the standard default for Blender uh, but you can hit texture and that's just a really good way uh, to not only be able to see for example your images as planes, your green screen footage um, but you'll get it the, you can see up here I'm running at like 13 frames per second up here in the corner and it's just a lot better to work that way whereas if in render mode I'm getting like less frames per second so it's a little bit glitchier and this just depends on how heavy your scene is um, but working in solid mode with it set to texture will help you especially if you're doing animation it'll just help you to see how the shot's going to look a lot better um, without you know too much heaviness on your laptop or computer. So anyway, jumping back into the camera here, um, there's nothing too crazy about this camera. It's basically just animating forward. Um, I think it starts out before this little structure here. So if I hit, oops, so if I hit play, see the little origin point is representing the camera. It's just animating towards my footage. Now, if we look through the camera mode, you'll see that there is some, almost like a natural feel to this like somebody is floating through space or maybe in a little tiny spacecraft coming towards the, the center of our scene and what I use for that is actually a free add-on called Shakeify by Ian Hubert and I believe there's one other gentleman who helped with that I can't remember his name forgive me if I'm wrong and guys you can download this free add-on for your camera off of github and as you can see it comes with a lot of presets here so if I click this little uh, plus button That'll allow me to add a preset and then I can just go here. So if I wanted to change this, say, to, you know, spaceship shake. Now I'm getting some natural camera movements. I mean, and then you can, if it's too much, you can dial back the influence here. Um, you can also play with the scale. So by dialing back the influence, I still get a little bit of shake, but not as much. But it's still adding a little bit some of something to your shot versus just having that camera come in 
so straight with no camera movement at all. Um, but there are a couple of cool presets that it comes with, and they just come in really handy. So I believe I had used Investigation uh, for this shot because it just felt felt right. And just one last thing before I head out here, I think it's important especially to try and keep your scene as low poly as possible. You can see up in the corner, this scene is only 16,082 vertices, which is really, really low poly. Um, and I think it looks pretty good. So what you can do to just check the uh, stats of your scene is you can hit this little drop down arrow and just make sure this statistics is checked. And then you can see there it's gone by checking this. This allows you to see how heavy your scene is. So if it's important for you to keep your scene low, like maybe you're somebody like me who's not using the most expensive laptop in the world, it's just a lower end Asus laptop, um, it's really important for me to try and keep my scene low poly so that when I render an EV it goes quick and I'm not spending too much time doing like costly renders on my laptop. So what I usually do is I'll just set up my camera and I'll kind of start building my scene through the view of the camera. That way it one, I'm not wasting too much time modeling stuff that's not even going to be in the shot, but things that are in the shot that aren't that important, they don't have to be that high poly. So I'm just keeping my scene as low poly as possible while getting it to look as good as possible. So guys, I hope this video was helpful. If you found it likeful, <laughs> likeful. If you found it helpful, don't forget to hit a like and leave a comment and hit subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.